So you wanna ride a short board? Well, you should, because it is a completely different way to experience the ocean. When you shorten your board, you instantly have more speed, more agility. It's like you've been given superpowers, and I feel every surfer should experience that. As well though, in your pursuit of a shortboard, you must upgrade yourself so you become a better person, a better surfer in your pursuit of a shortboard. So in this video, I'm gonna show you shortboard shortcuts, how you can shorten the path to a shortboard literally by years. So it's a little bit of technique, stuff that you do in the water, and also how to upgrade your body so that you can perform all these things. And the last one is something you can apply instantly. And it's a shortboard revolution that nobody's talking about and it's the most important one. So stick around to the end for that. Let's get started. So paddle strength is the most important thing that you need in order to have a shorter board because the less foam you have, the more energy it takes to move your board through the water. So paddle endurance is an obvious one because when you have to use more energy to move, your gas tank gets depleted a lot faster. So upgrading your endurance is a big thing. So I've made tons of videos about building paddle strength using these paddle bands, which we make. Um, so I won't cover it here, but you can find them everywhere. I talk about it all the time. But something I don't talk about as often is paddle power. Now endurance and power, typically speaking, are opposing opposites when it comes to training methods. But there's a cool way we can get around that with using a very specific technique, and it's how you actually paddle. And you do it in a way so that you're conserving energy, you're filling your batteries as much as possible while you're moving around, and you only explode and use what I call the power stroke for the three to five strokes right before you get into a wave. So you conserve that power for when you need it, and you become more efficient when you don't need it. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Now when you're paddling and taking off, the pitch of your board matters so much and it becomes so much more pronounced when you have less foam. The board moves very easily and it sinks. So if you're too far backwards, your nose will come up and you'll plow and you'll never get anywhere. If you're too far forward, you'll typically nose dive a lot during your takeoffs. So the sweet spot of where you want to lay is a lot shorter, but you have to be able to control the pitch with muscles that um, come from the center because your arms and legs can't do it. So. In order to do that, you have to lay precisely, but you can control the pitch if you're a little bit out of position. So your legs have to be together, knees on the tail pad, and then so you can lift your head up, board comes up, make it go forward, come up like this. So let's imagine you're taking off on a wave and all of a sudden you feel like you're nose diving, you can come up like this and it controls your board. It takes a lot of strength, it's very specific, but also when you are going to take off for a wave and you lean forward a little bit, it controls that pitch. Because if you look at right here, there's rocker in the nose, right? So the more forward you go, the faster the board will go. But again, you don't want to nose dive your board. The only way to control that is with your core. So when you're paddling, you're paying attention to where your nose is relative to the, the water. If it starts going underwater, you lift up. If not, you can stay low. It takes a lot of figuring out, but you will never figure it out if you have a weak core because it's the only way to control the pitch of your board. Now this workout I'm gonna show you is so, so important because it's gonna launch you forward as far as upgrading your body goes to ride a short board. Because all those things that I told you about breathing with your diaphragm, about having a proper paddle stroke, those proper paddle muscles, those proper core muscles, they are so specific and so, again, opposite of what we do in our regular lives. So lots of people will say, if you wanna ride a short board, you gotta surf more. Well, surf more isn't always an option. And even if you surf every weekend, it's still less than 90 five or 99% of your time. So you're spending most of your time on land still. So doing this can make it feel like you surfed a shortboard every single day with just a couple minutes of training and that's gonna shorten the learning curve by years. So it's very, very simple. We use these paddle bands again that we make and so you need an exercise ball and you put it right under your diaphragm and you just practice perfect paddle reps. It's gonna get your feet out wide or far behind you on your toes pointed just like you would on your board and see we're a little bit unstable here so you're forced to control it and then you do perfect paddle reps so again shoulders don't rock spine doesn't twist head stays high so you're forced to stay static and locked while you're just using your paddle muscles like this it's going to build your core strength it's going to build your posture it's going to build paddle endurance you're going to be breathing with your diaphragm on the ball strengthening your diaphragm so it becomes makes paddling um, a recharge mode, so you're filling yourself with oxygen. It does everything that I talked about with one simple workout that's so powerful. The most powerful part about this is convenience, doing it at home. Because if you can't surf every single day, this makes your body think that it surfed a shortboard 
every single day. You see how powerful that is. Cause then when you get in the water, you have the body of an advanced level surfer. And then the skills will start to really quickly fill in that space that you give it to fill because your body does what you tell it to do when you're on a shorter board. This is so powerful. And this will literally shorten the learning curve by years. Most people will never get to a short board. If you do this, it will guarantee that you get to a short board. Now this is the best one because you can apply it instantly without any training at all. And it is, there has been a revolution in the shortboard world and almost nobody noticed. This board right here is called the Sweet Potato and it's made by Firewire. And it has absolutely blown my mind. It has completely changed what I thought a shortboard was or what was necessary in board design. And it's what I thought limitations were. This thing has completely changed what I think. So this is meant to be a groveler, a small wave board. So you take this out when the waves are junk and it has tons of foam to help you get into the waves, but it's meant to be a high performance board. So what they've done is marketed this as a small wave board and they've completely missed the mark. They should be marketing this as a short board with training wheels. It, I've ridden it in almost all conditions now from two feet to head high and a little bit above. It performs so well. The, so what it's it done, they, they put in a ton of foam. So right here to here is so, so wide, but it's insanely, insanely thick. As well, it has very little rocker. So it's not curved up very much. So it stays very flat, which makes it, which makes it way, way faster. But what's most important is how much they thinned out the ends. So if you look at the tail, how narrow it is there, it's almost like a traditional short board, but it also gets so thin right there. So there's hardly any foam. So that gives it pivot. The very first time I took it out and had it on like a big face and went to do a cutback. So I do a cutback, I turn and I look and I couldn't believe the thing just whipped and, oh yeah, and it was going so fast. Like the speed of this thing blew my mind because I think it would be like, a little bit sluggish because it's just so much foam. Not the case because what they've done is it has a twin concave, which that means is, so it's dipped right here. It's like a cup, right? On both sides with a spine that runs up the middle. So when you're on a rail and it's tipped over like this, it's, the water is only touching half the board. So it almost like cuts the board in half because all the water is being funneled under this side. So it just flies. And then again, the, t the, the narrowness of the tail gives it so much pivot. I was blown away by the performance. Now there's a few things that like that it can't do. It can't like really, really like throw the fins. Um, I've been having a hard time anyways, but that's nothing. Um, I, I, like I, so I, I, I bought this so I could surf crappy waves and I ended up surfing it in high quality waves and just like can't, and the wave count goes up because it paddles so, so nice. It takes less endurance to move this through the water. It takes less power to get into the waves because it has so much buoyancy. I'm blown away. I, I did not think it would be as fun and performance based as it was. And I didn't think, I didn't expect it would work in like head high waves, which it does. So what you can do is if you're looking to accelerate your progress is get one of these. And the, the, the secret really is in a simple statement, don't get rid of more foam than you need to. Firewire, they're just mad scientists there. This is really breaking the mold. It has completely changed what I think um, about boat surfing. Um, and, and honestly, if you're looking to get down to a shortboard, shortboard with training wheels, you'll get all the performance, you'll get all the skills knowledge that you need to ride a shortboard performance wise and skills wise, making turns and stuff, riding the tail, all that stuff. But you're going to be given a little cheat code because you, it bumps you up. It requires less of you physically to ride a shortboard. And then when you want to, you can start taking off a little bit more foam to get a, a, a bit of a different feel on a board. But this is the fastest way to get to a shortboard without a doubt. Anyone can do it. All you got to do is pick one of these up. I'm this one's a five eight, and it's forty one liters, and that's a ton of liters. And for me, I'm like one ninety five with a wetsuit. I'm like two fifteen or two ten, two hundred ten pounds. Um, so this is, this is a lot for me. Um, so all you gotta do is just, um, follow the, the website of Firewire. They have a, a, a sizing guide where you can put in your skill level and your weight, and it'll tell you which boards you need. So I can't recommend this highly enough. These are shortboarding shortcuts, upgrading your body with training to give you the requirements that you need, and then getting the proper board, which will have less requirements of you. So those two, two things meet each other. You're building the body, but you're getting a board that doesn't quite need the body. Like you get that, that space where you become a shortboard surfer is so, so close if you do these two things that I just taught you.
Hey, I hope you liked that video. And if you are a super serious surfer, you want to get from beginner to intermediate to advanced as quickly as possible and truly reach your potential as a surfer, I want to invite you to join our Waterman Method Training. It's everything that I've been talking about. You'll get the paddle bands that I mentioned. You'll get follow-along workouts that show you exactly how to do it. You'll get pop-up training so you can make your pop-up perfect in under 30 days. But also, you're going to get a community of surfers who are committed to helping each other. So, so something about surfing, it's a selfish and uninviting place because there's one person, there's one wave, there's not a lot of stuff and skills about surfing that get talked about out there, which we provide. So whenever you have a specific problem that's holding back your surfing, you can bring it to us and we'll tell you the fastest path to get through that. But also you can have some inspiration. You can see surfers who are exactly like you all over the world who are getting these results as well too. And that's the power of the community. One thing that's really cool about this community is that it is global. So you'll instantly get plugged into um, a network. So if you go surf around the world, you'll have people that you already know that can tell you where to surf and they can tell you about um, how to improve your surfing faster. So we provide all of that. The paddle training, the pop-up training, the breath training, um, the flexibility, the strength, the skills, um, the community. All that is what we provide with our Waterman Method program and I really want you to be a part of it. So there's a link down below in the description. It goes to a video. Watch that video. It will explain the Waterman Method step by step. You can see it inside it completely. And at the end of the video, it will explain to you how you can get involved in our training if you choose to do so. My name is Kyle Russ. This is Hydro Mind. Thanks a lot for watching.